This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky. Talk tech. It is the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, for the final time, the final uh, endeavor here in Mayhem Studio as we move to our new shiny studio up the hill, four blocks away. Join us for our couch party. Uh, you can check that out in the events section on the Awesome Cast Facebook. Uh, and what that thing's about, maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later. But with me from Studio C, he's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going today? It's good, good, sir. Are we, are we, are we bringing the brick wall? We, I don't, I, we haven't, you know, I, I want to start moving everything out of here tomorrow. So maybe we will, because I, uh, you know, do we do signing? Do we do Polaroids for people in the studio? Like what, 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 you know, what's our little invite wall thing? Everyone, you know? everyone signs a brick. Everybody signs a brick. We only got so many bricks. I don't know about that. Well, you just started, you'd have to add another panel. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's true. Just add on, I, I, I guess. So, um, and also with us in studio, she's the director of sales and marketing down at the Scare House, scare. the scariest place to work. So scary and sweaty and sweaty. <laughs> Wait, just like here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like yeah. It's, it's just like you're you're in your home office. Yeah, that's nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Dudas is with us. The K Dudders on Twitter. How you doing? Good. I was pimping podcast today. Podcast yes. today. Yes, um, yeah, that, that date needs to get out there uh, mm -hmm. officially uh, for that. Um, look at the end of uh, September, I believe, we'll be pod camping yet again. So, uh, but anyways, uh, like I said, this is, this is where we talk tech, we get geeky. I'm, you know, podcaster here, the uh, uh, Pittsburgh State of Mind, and you guys can join us here every Tuesday, live.awesomecast.net or the Facebook page uh, where we stream from there. And you can also uh, look at everything at awesomecast.com. Uh, subscribe to this, the awesome chat. Those are going to be coming back after we do our move. Uh, we've you know just been a little preoccupied with everything going on with the new uh, business ventures. And, and we hope to return that to form here in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, please subscribe to the Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. The video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page. Uh, you can also drop us a line, AwesomeCast, on the Twitter, uh, the Facebook, and AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. And uh, you can check us out streaming currently, but I think it's going to move soon. Thursdays, 8 a.m. after Funny Money at RiversEdgePGH.com. And also streaming uh, every day at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern time at The405Media.com. So you can drop in on some awesome cast there. Also, uh, please, uh, you know, giving a shout out to our Patreon supporters. I almost missed it last week. I'm so sorry. Uh, Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level. Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter. As well as uh, Michael Fedor at the fan of the show level. Uh, Mike Fedor show on the Twitter. You guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Oh, so I thought Missy was telling me something in the doc. I think she's copy and pasting. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. And let's, I, I just read the, your, yours is, I, I, I got to Okay. Let's, let's go with AR. Let's go with AR here with, uh, with Chilla. <laughs> well, what do you so got you, this week? Have you read the article? No, I have not. So, so there's there's two guys that are part of the Jimmy Iovine and Andre Young Academy at the University of Sh Southern California, um, and they went in to uh, seek funding for a new device that they would hope to help supercharge the young and hot hot augmented reality industry. Um, these two guys cobbled together out of a fishbowl. Um, AR glasses for the iPhone. Um, so they instantly got got funding. Their goal is to launch this headset targeted at the um, iPhone type devices um, for $99. So obviously when you look at something like the, the Samsung Galaxy VR um, coming in at like $129 if you include the remote. If you look at and they're they're comparing this more to the $3,000 HoloLens. Um, 
this I think it's extremely exciting. And if you scroll down part way into the dock, there's there's a, a kid wearing one of the the prototypes of these goggles. Like I said, the original the original concept was built out of out of uh, fish bowls, but it uses the iPhone screen and then reflects it onto kind of a pass through um, piece of glass. Um, it's obviously these aren't something you're going to wear around, but I totally like this idea for any kind of gaming or for heads up display um anything along on along that line so i i thought it was a pretty cool concept um and and the but salesforce ceo mark i don't know beanie off and will i am actually mm-hmm. helped back some of this um so i think it's a pretty cool concept i'm looking forward to what what they're going to do with this and what what they actually said, their goal is to cr- kind of make an application that hosts all of their apps kind of in it. So if you're familiar with Oculus on the, the, the Galaxy, right, there's an app that has all of the Oculus content. Um, that's what they'd like to do with this. And they, they have some pretty cool concepts where they show kind of like a pac-man video game on the table in front of you um all kinds of stuff so I, I i'm looking forward to something like this what what does concern me is if this is well one thing that confuses me is if it's that easy to make this why didn't i'm, I'm surprised they're the first ones to come up with it um especially when you look at like the the microsoft uh hololens but what excites me about that or what worries me too is if you if you watch the um, what's the apps competition that that Apple put on iTunes, I can't remember the name of it. Where where um, oh, uh, I Justine and and everybody were were kind of around it. It was like a Shark Tank for app development, right? right um, uh, uh, Attack of the Apps or something like Planet, yeah, Planet of the, Apps. Planet, yeah, Planet of the Apps. Um, I don't know if you watched any of those, but there was no. there was an episode where a guy came on. Um, and, and I think it was like a week or two before um, WWDC. And he had built this whole AR library and AR code that what he was going to, that was obviously probably took him a long time to development develop. Um, and he was going to market it to companies like Ikea and uh, people that were selling furniture. And then two weeks later, you see at WWDC, um, they, they totally Sherlocked him. So it wouldn't surprise me if someone comes out with this headset, but at the $99 price point, um, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's going to look no no sillier than me sitting around my, my house with a pair of, of other, uh, a different pair of, of VR goggles on. What I like this is it kind of gives you that heads up kind of look through and it can actually place things on the table. Yeah, I like you have a bit more peripheral ver- vision than what the HoloLens does. Um, mm-hmm. and it, and there was a really good demo, uh, heavy metal Jesus. It does a lot of video game stuff, had a great, he got to borrow a hollow lens from his friends that work at Microsoft, uh, cause he lives up in around Seattle, uh, Redmond or whatever. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, it, 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 I like the idea of it. And I like that. It's like, that's that Samsung gear kind of model where it's just this hundred dollar piece. So, um, I, I worry about like how, how bright does it need to be? Like, is it going to work in all room situations? Right. Like, well, I, feel, so I, I don't think you're doing this outside. Well, and I don't know if you, uh, first, so I don't know if you're doing it outside, but it it's using the reflection and the brightness of the phone. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. Like I'm guess I'm guessing based on how close the phone is to the glass and based on the tilt, um, as long as your phone brightness is way up, depending on how the other side of the, the clear piece is tinted, it shouldn't have much of an impact. I, 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 I don't know. I'm sure it's been thought about. Um, but it'll be interesting to see where they take it. And at that hundred dollar price point, even if they go on sale for, for 25% off and you can pick it up for 75 bucks, it's a pretty good deal just to try out. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I hope it gets out there a bit more. Probably you're going to see somebody bigger come up with their version of this when they're pushing things. So I'm guessing Apple's going to come out with their own version. It's just how long and how, so, so, so I can get the hundred dollar Miro, or I can get the thousand dollar Apple. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what's the difference going to be? Absolutely. Uh, so check that out. Uh, the website I just just came across the website. If you want to look more into it, uh, mirareality.com. That's M I R A. 
So, Katie. Yes. I, is, is this is your awesome thing along the lines of your uh, <laughs> of your job description? No, it was something that random. Well, popped up in my as an ad on Facebook. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. I don't know. <laughs> but because um, there's all these boxes by month and things you can do monthly and get these fun things. And this one is called Hunt a Serial Killer. Essentially, a serial killer will send you evidence each month and you are trying to figure out who this person is and solve the crime. So it's essentially it's a monthly subscription and you can either, you know, give it to somebody else or keep it for yourself. And uh, it's pretty much just merging you in this world of serial killer stuff and figuring out who it is. There's a killer curator ships out something to you. But you get tools and objects, puzzle pieces, correspondence. He sends you letters, or he or she. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Like it's, it's so it's kind of like a real world killer, mm-hmm. you know, mystery kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so it's it's something more interactive than the usual boxes that you get, and it's kind of fun. And serial killers are hip and cool now. They are the the cool thing now. So you can hunt one from your own home in an immersive environment. <laughs> receive received as a gift creepy as f yep uh, mm-hmm. from lauren from san diego <laughs> so that's awesome I, I like seeing this kind of like it's not just like hey here's a box of random stuff with a certain theme right mm-hmm. like it's actually like I, I guess it's really kind of a box of game right yeah it's it's really neat and they keep it to a very small number and they started in 2016 it was a single immersive thriller experience for a small number of teams at a camp. And then they decided to make it more of a thing where they kind of sent it to homes after they did a weekend of like 10,000 people did a big event. And they're like, well, let's do it at their homes. Awesome. So you don't have to leave your house. You don't have to tell. It's kind of nice because I think sometimes people are afraid to admit what they're really into. And boxes are a fun way to like get something that you're into without everybody knowing about it. So now you can pretend you're a detective solving murders. That's awesome. <laughs> Check it out at huntakiller.com if you want to sign up for that. So chill, chill. Is this something you'd want to get into? It's it's interesting. The one thing that I I'd be interested as it grows because I was I'm scrolling through um, some of the information, and it one of the questions is, you know, how do I if if I sign up today, how do I catch up? And it, when you sign up, it's it's like you don't get you get the first box, and then you move along. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no, it's, it seems like I'd be more interested in it if I could figure out who the serial yep. and then move to like the next chapter to, I, I, I mean, I'm definitely interested in the concept of murder mystery dinners all the time. Um, we've gone to murder mystery dinners and we've, we've hosted murder mystery dinners. Mm. Um, mm. And, and obviously there's, at the end of the night, you get to figure out, you get to make your guess of who the killer was, and then the killer is revealed. In this, it seems like it's like the X Files. Are they out there? Um, are we ever going to see aliens? That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I would worry. I, I would want there to be an end to see if, did I figure it out correctly, and then start a new chapter, kind of thing. But that's just my own opinion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Um, awesome. So I, I dived into something that I know Katie had a little less uh, luck with this <laughs> <laughs> and, than I did. Um, but, uh, you know, Prime Day was last week and, and, you know, I didn't really find too much. I Actually, I think I did end up getting some web cameras on on uh, Prime Day. I don't know if they were they were discounted and, and, and I don't know if it was because of that or just generally. But uh, I, I picked up an Echo Dot and... Didn't have any problems that Katie had down here. I don't know what your deal was with it. It just didn't like you. Uh, but <laughs> <Thanks>. uh, <laughs> but I was really amazed. And also, I, I, I might have a second generation one, too. I don't know how long they've been out. Uh, but uh, but I'm really digging it. Like, I'm automatically, I'm just like, man, I need two more of these. Because, it, it you know, you're only able to talk to it in that one room I'm, I'm putting it in the living room for now and we're doing the <laughs> um uh, what's up in the morning and it gives me the little breakdown of everything that's going on it lets me know my calendar and the news and everything um and and it was telling me really bad spider-man jokes uh <laughs> when i had it down here with mad mike uh, 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 last week 
uh, before one of the shows. Uh, so I, I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm kind of finding I, I need to take a deep dive into the skills and everything like that. So you know any any you know help with that anybody that, that that's been playing with it might have I really appreciate it. Uh, but uh, oh, this is the one thing thing I've been doing because the dog, as those that have been in the studio know, uh, really has you really have its attention when you have food. Um, so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm eating something and I'm saying, Hey, Hey, mm -hmm. um, uh, can my dog eat the chocolate? Let's say. And, uh, it actually goes through a list of the things that a dog and a cat, you know, can and can't eat. So it was actually kind of, and there's some interesting stuff in there. Like don't give them raisins apparently. Hmm. Um, so because the cat was also looking at me because the cat's been really, really interesting as Katie's experiencing over there. <laughs> 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 but um, but no i uh, no i've been really enjoying it and um you know asking questions just seeing where it goes and already it just seems a lot more um responsive than than siri is uh and and, and i've just uh, you know kind of determined i have these two different relationships with my my ais you know siri is the one that i ask to uh you know remind me of stuff set an alarm you know things like that alexa is the one that i get information from Right. Like Siri is like the the make my phone do something or or bring up this show on Apple TV, uh, where, whereas Alexa's more, you know, what, almost like Google, like what I expect the Google home to be to a point. So, uh, Chill, I know you're, you've you been playing with it a little bit. What's your experience it, been? It, yeah. So Siri for me is more um, in the car. Give me directions to wherever. Um and I have good results with that series more to your point when I'm not at home um, or it's more like a bedtime alarm. Alexa's a lot of um, set a timer. Um, give me my flash updates. Uh, but then for me, the home automation is a big piece of it. And if you choose your home automation wisely and you pick the products that are cross-platform, you can actually use all of them to perform the ho the home automation, and they actually quasi through a middleman speak to each other. So it's really interesting because if I'm driving home and I want to turn on my back porch and turn on a light in the house, I can do that from Siri. And if I'm in the house and I'm ready for bed, then a train takes care of it for me. Train. So <laughs> I'm trying to come up with something. So I'm not triggering people's device. We got to use a train. I feel like we've done that before. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's, it's all about physically where I'm at and what I'm looking for. Um, I will say I do ask Siri a lot of math problems. Like if I'm too lazy to actually open up the calculator app, there's a lot of there's a lot of times I ask her to do simple long math like this plus this plus this minus this plus this um, or uh, odd odd multiplication problems etc. Mm -hmm. um, but you're probably a little more fortunate than me in the amount of time that you're at your house versus out and about. I, I don't know, um, so I can't. I, I find that. The, the best the best assistant is the one that's in my pocket right or is right. Is, a, is a is your voice away um, so I do find I, I use them both and and a lot of times I use them for both the same things the interesting thing is is when I find something new um, that one of them can do I will often try to get the other one to do it because I want to see can I just do this with this device or can I just make it where whatever device or is around me at that point Um kind of allows me to have that, that capability. Um, the thing that, that, uh, that I'm interested in with Amazon and Alexa is with their whole concept of you can kind of, you can do device to device calling the show came out. They're now possibly going to put in um, a messaging type app that gives me a lot more interest in the Alexa platform because it now becomes a communication device and I can communicate with, people on their phone with the Alexa app and I can connect with people with the actual Alexa devices. Yeah, that, that's one thing that surprised me. And, and I played with it a little bit because um, there was 
a train on 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 fire tv and but i don't have a uh microphone you know remote to 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 use with it so so that's the first i I got to check out the amazon alexa app and now you know seeing kind of how it visualizes everything that you ask it is actually seems kind of useful right yeah and i think i think now that you have the dot you can hook the dot up to your fire stick and use the dot as the microphone and can completely oh. voice control voice control the fire stick. Um, the other thing that I don't know if you saw in the news last week, um, a number of companies, I think it's Sony, Samsung, um, Harmony, they actually, like I'm guessing, partnered directly with Amazon on this, but they've made it where now you don't have to give like the tell command, like, Hey, a train tell harmony to turn on the TV. It's smart enough that if you just say, Hey, a train turn on the TV, it knows which service performs that. And then, and the, the, the problem and the reason they they had the service listener name in front of it was because if you said, Hey, a train turn up the volume, it didn't know if it should turn up, the dots volume or your TV's volume. Right. And now, now it's based on time. It's based on timing. Right. So if you say, Hey, train turn on the TV. And I think it's within five minutes, say like give volume commands. It automatically defaults to the TV system versus switching over and trying to control the dot controls. So, so it's, it's pretty neat how they're trying to build in, some a some kind of quasi AI into figuring out what service you're actually calling. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I, I'm liking it. I, like I said, I, I need. I want to replace the iPod dock in the kitchen with this thing. I want to keep an eye out for whenever they drop down to like 35 bucks again because it's it's inevitable, right? Maybe like Black Friday or something, um, or I don't know Labor Day. I don't know. Uh, so uh, it, it, it makes sense. I, I I see why somebody would want to have this every week because then like you, you talk to your house. You know, you, you, you can mm-hmm. sleepily like stumble into your bathroom when you're getting ready in the morning and start asking it to tell you things or give you the, you know, a daily tech news headlines is, is a thing that's on there on flash briefings, which I really like because I really like da- daily tech news. Um, mm-hmm. um, so so having that little bit in there, it, it, you know, is, is better than fiddling with the iPod in the dock and doing all this stuff and don't drop it in the toilet, you know, uh, you know, you just, you know, yell at a thing and it works. So it makes a lot of sense. So um, also what makes a lot of sense is our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. And we get to get closer to them next week when we move into our new studio. So we appreciate them. Um, you know, uh, feed, that's what got Katie here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. What was it? Slack. Is there pizza? And cat butt. And cat butt. And, and you have the cat butt. What is he? Is he just like staring at the wall? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> no, no. Just looking at oh, Spider Man. Oh, you. now now he's like, okay, people are people are talking about me. I'm out of here. I've had enough he's of gonna, this. He's gonna bite Spider Spider Man's feet. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, but no, please check out our friends sliceonbroadway.com uh, right here along the tracks here on Broadway Avenue here in Beachview, as well as Main Street and Carnegie PA and PNC Park Home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Let them know. Let them know that the Oscar cast sent you. All right. We have some uh, submissions. And I see uh, Matt Weller actually also submitted the mirror prism that you were just talking about for your awesome thing. Uh, Brandon submitted a couple. Um, One, um, Atari reveals their new console. Uh, This is the second announcement we've had for their console. We still don't really have information about their console in the long run. Um, they've been weirdly kind of um, you know, a couple of different shows I, I listened to have been talking about this. There's no like we, here's the design. It looks kind of like an Atari box with new ports on it, like USBs and such. Um, they say that it's going to have a mix of classic and current content again. Does that mean I'm playing Watch Dogs on this thing? Or does this mean I'm pa- playing a really snazzy version of Frogger? I don't know yet. And they're not telling anybody. Uh, but again, new ports, four USB, uh, SD card, uh, HDMI. Uh, there's a black black and red editions. Um, and it, it looks cool. Like, if you like that old, like, kind of wood 
Atari look. It, it looks really, really cool. Uh, so, again, there's not really much more to say about it, but it's interesting to see Atari is doing this. And apparently, I think our Atari is prominently featured. Was it in the Player One, Ready Player One trailer, I think, that just came out? So, uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. I, I don't know. Are you guys... I, did you guys have Ataris? Are you excited for a comeback of Atari after all these years? Nah. No, it was. I, I feel like a lot of the. I feel like a lot of the, like the games I remember playing on Atari were Qbert, mm-hmm. um, Donkey Kong. Because I feel like we're more Nintendo generation here, aren't we? You, well, that not just that, but I feel like the games that were really popular on Atari then got like ported. Like there were bad games like ET. <laughs> and Indiana Jones and and the Temple of Doom, the, the, they were just not good. But things like um, uh, it's the jungle game where you're swinging from vines. Pitfall. Um, Pitfall. Like I feel like those games then got ported to the Nintendo generation in some way, yeah. shape, or form, and continued to get like I remember there was an awesome re, uh, rebuild of Pitfall for the PC that the graphics were actually really, really good. It was the same exact game, just with really good graphics. Um, Load Runner was a, was a big one for me growing up. Um, Smurfs. And that was actually a ColecoVision mm-hmm. game that they ported to the Atari. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it, it's, it's cool, and I'm interested to see what they put on there. Like def, like Defender, it, it got ported. Joust got ported. Um, so I, I, I'm interested to see what kind of content they could come up with that's going to make it a, a differentiation versus something someone else could do or that I could just fire up on some other device. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny because a lot of the Atari games, I played both on Atari and then on the Commodore 64. <laughs> like, uh, shoot, was that boat game? It was, oh, River Raid. That was one of my favorites. Yeah. I like River Raid. One. Yeah. So it's funny, like talking about they're not just ported on consoles, they're ported on other, <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> and I wonder if it's going to be a retro kind of thing, like they're going to purposely stick to the 8-bit retro kind of fun graphics, or if they're going to try and go all in with the fanciness. Yeah, it's going to be new stuff. You know, it, it's not entirely clear. Like, is this just going to be a higher end of, like, those ones you can get off the Target that has, like, 80 Atari games on them? You know, the Sega <laughs> versions, too. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting to see see where that's going to go. So um, John Carmen shared... Uh, an article about uh, from TechCrunch that Disney is going to be uh, opening an immersive Star Wars hotel where each guest gets a storyline. Now, I just binged Westworld over the weekend. So <laughs> I just saying I'm not I'm kind of worried about this. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but but no, I guess it, it's a hotel. It's Star Wars themed. You like you get like a costume i think and uh and and yeah and everything is interactive and you're in the world you don't get windows to the outside you get windows to space scenes that creeps me out (laughs) (laughs) i mean i love star wars but it's it's all concept right now of course (laughs) they showed it they showed it in the middle of its d23 uh expo in Los, los angeles sorry um and it looks like it's expected Probably in the next couple of years. Uh, he's at the Orlando Resort. They're, they're doing a giant Star Wars land down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's going to be the place to go for that. So I, I started a savings account for this. <laughs> this is... I, I, yeah. I can't wait. So when they announced this, like this is like, oh, this is what my friends were... This is how excited my friends probably were for the Harry Potter yes. thing. I get right? it. I totally right? get it. Like, like, that was my first thought. It was like, I'm, like, I'm getting some blue milk. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but like this, I feel like this because this is built into the hotel. Yes, mm-hmm. so I feel like the Harry Potter. You can't. There's not a Harry Potter resort, is there? Mm-mm. No, no. It's, it's just it's, the it's, Harry Potter section of the park. Right, right. Like this, your entire stay could be hanging out in Jabba's Palace, mm-hmm. the Moss Eisley Cantina. You could just get crazy bar drunk and shoot at Wookies. Yes. Like I don't know. I'm, I'm super, super excited for this. He's getting drunk, yelling. <laughs> I shot first, Sam Ever. <laughs> like I, like I think this is a brilliant idea, and I hope I'm interested to see how because each guest gets a storyline. Like, is it going to be like Westworld, where you can kind of go off your storyline? Like, I hope it's not a lot like Westworld, where uh... <laughs> no, 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 but no, but you know what I mean. Like, it'll be interesting to see, like how they how they adapt. I'm just 
super excited. How far have you made it in Westworld? I finished it over a okay, weekend. So, yeah, I, I think Westworld was what in the in the storyline it was like thirty grand a day to stay there. I, I, I don't never, think this is I never be heard a price. Grand. Did they say a price? Yeah, there's, there's, they they do say a price in the in the storyline. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it was like thirty grand a day, um, or something ridiculous. So, um, no, I'm, this won't be thirty grand. But I'm definitely planning. I'm planning a trip for when Christopher's probably like between eight and ten. I think it would probably be a good good age for him. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I, I'm just super stoked for this. I was disappointed that there wasn't a life size ad at in when you looked at the. <laughs> A little model. <laughs> Where's my giant ad at? I was like, that's all I wanted was I wanted to be in an ad at, <laughs> or at least there, see a giant ad at. Well, there's, there's, there's the rest of the park. You never know. Yeah, the, the section in the park that has the, it's kind of like the uh, shield generator mm-hmm. from Endor. It kind of it has a mock part of a full size ad at. It's not the same. like it's the it's like the front end of it coming coming out. So did you? Do, yeah, did you definitely watch the throw video? one of those in there. Did you watch the video with the models where you flew through the the, the whole time? No, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, there's a there's a fly through of the model essentially of it, nice. and there's like a full size X wing, I believe. And yeah, it looks pretty sweet. <laughs> Let's see if we can find that real quick. Just need previews of Star Wars land attraction. Mm. Uh, anyways, uh, so uh, and, and also Brandon shared um, there's a Lego themed uh, uh, restaurant in the Philippines with brick shaped b- buns. For your burgers, buns or burgers? Uh, well, the the buns themselves are bricked, so, so they're easily stackable. Yeah, easily stackable. There you go. You can you can um you can uh, oh was that is Jughead? Yeah, you can Jughead that stuff. Uh, so just stack them up and eat them. Um, and I think that's all I want to get into from that. Uh, so, uh, Katie, mm-hmm. I heard there's good news from Tech Shop. Tech Shop, yeah. Tech shop. So they are the the last thing that they said was that they um, may be talking to some folks that may be getting them some money so they can stay in town. They are not sending their stuff to Brooklyn right now, which was the the next step was to send all their big equipment to Brooklyn. So they're not doing that, and uh, they're staying open another month while they try to figure this out. So it's optimistic. So there's still a chance they're going to stick around, mm-hmm. which is exciting. I don't know if we talk about this on the show or we're just generally talking about this, but you know they just haven't found haven't done as much business as i hoped here i guess um and and tech shop is this really awesome place where you can get your hands on with 3d printers and like like water cutters and and all kinds of like heavy equipment to you know make your equipment basically uh so it's good to see that it's uh could get uh could stick around here so we actually talked with uh les gals over there um on the awesome chat and if you watch the video version he actually took a tour with us via his ipad so you get a little bit of tour of the at least as of about a year ago. So I was out there Sunday night um, because uh, we're in the food hog. Oh, take that mic. And we're in the food hog and Red Bull is arranged that we get to go on Sundays to help build our craft. And we, I used the shot box shop, but it was pretty cool to watch. <laughs> cool. I was like, look at it go. Awesome. Awesome. Good to hear. Good news. Um, and <laughs> Google glass too. <laughs> the revenge. This is, this is happening. Yeah. I, I just put this in there for you. Cause I had to, yeah, okay. they're coming back, but it's more in like the industrial side of things. It's more for the factory workers and mm-hmm. the, the, it's so interesting. It's like technology for the factory worker, which it seems like it would not go together. It, it actually makes sense because yeah. even even mm-hmm. when like that first edition, there was an enterprise edition there. Mm-hmm. And that's what took off was was using it in medical, using mm-hmm. it in factories, just having a heads up display while you're working on whatever it is you're working on. It just kind of kind of makes sense. So, Chilla? Yeah, I was going to say it's 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 not a it's not a replacement. I don't think it's a new version. Mm-hmm. Um necessarily from the actual physical unit. I think the some of the glass piece have been redesigned and whatnot. Um and I do think it's interesting. So if you're if you're trying to fix something or you need some kind of schematic, you can definitely bring that up. Mm-hmm. Um right heads up. So so I, I think this is a great idea. Um, um, I, I'm hoping it takes off even more. Um, we'll see. We'll see what it brings. I, can, I mean, I could see it if it had better battery life for me. I could see it using it around work, even as just kind of a heads-up display for notifications that I want. Where kind of wherever I go. 
Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and that, the, the watch has kind of replaced that concept for me, but it's Absolutely. primarily primarily due to battery life. Mm-hmm. Well, like you're I, in luck, I, Chilla. The new, the new Glass EE includes an updated camera module that bumps resolution from 5 megapixels to 8, longer battery life, a better processor, an indicator for video recording, and improved Wi-Fi speeds. So well, then I want one of those. It's modular, How do I too. Upgrade? It's actually a module versus like actually being a unit. Oh, Ooh, see? Well, I want one. <laughs> can anyone get one? Uh, I think it can. You're just going to be. It's going to be costly. Um, so let's say it's the Enterprise Edition, or sorry, Explorer. This one's the Enterprise Edition. Sorry. Um, companies testing it included uh, GE, Boeing, DHL, and Volkswagen, and they measured huge gains in productivity, productivity, and noticeable improvements in quality. Um, and, and at the end of the article, what talks about here on Wired about how you know one of the big differences it's like you know in, in, in a lot of cases attached to like your safety glasses. Mm-hmm. because OSHA and such, right? So you leave them there. You're not taking them along with you. They're not attached to your regular glasses or anything like that. So, I mean, that it makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense in, in that case to be hands-free, to, to have the kind of safety aspect and everything. So um, it's good to see because, I, I mean, it, it definitely had some advantages there. Mm-hmm. So awesome. Um, you know, and we'll see, we'll see, you know, when it gets that, I can integrate it in my glasses idea. You know, some someday down the line, I'll be I'll be up for that idea. So, um, let's see. Audi introduces AI. I think we all know that because we watched Spider Man. <laughs> uh, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah. But uh, did, did anybody see so this is a side? But uh, uh, the Audi commercial where it's um, Spider Man taking his driver's test. No, no, I didn't see that one. Look for that. It's about like three or four minutes, and it's really funny. Because it, 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 it's really good. Whoever they got as the uh, driving instructor really hams it up a bit. And then Spuddy like, gets out and stops some bank robbers while he's telling them about all of his problems driving and everything. So it was, it was kind of fun. Uh, YouTube is experimenting with GIF-like video previews. So as I think I tagged Katie in, pretty much what you expected from Pornhub. Uh, so glad to see it's kind of upgrading there. And it, it actually startled me because I knew about the article. Then I was on YouTube and and it did it when you rolled over something. Because, you know, what have they told us on YouTube to do? For how long? Katie, you know this from putting YouTube up. You put a thumbnail mm-hmm. with your text there and everything, mm-hmm. right? And then you roll over. That goes away and it shows you the video. And you're like, oh, hey, what's this? Um, so I, I, I kind of like that idea. Especially on, you know, the people that get angry because we have a, a, a video about a match, like a wrestling match, and people think it's the wrestling match and get mad at us and when it's not. So, you know, um, yeah. So, But do you think people are going to stop to watch the preview or they're just going to click on it and then get mad anyway? I think people will get... I th- <laughs> They'll get mad no matter what. <laughs> anyway, it's YouTube. Everybody's just straight mad. Uh, so there's that. But, um... Uh, fa- uh let's see what else is there what what other stories you guys want to touch on here um going back to your amazon concept or your your uh a train that that last article i actually thought about after reading this doing this with the the, the dutters I saw dot this i saw this this was interesting the yeah so the, so the the, yeah, the dutters dot um they they this guy took his his echo dot that he got on prime day um, and put it in his car. Um, now his car has um, in-car Wi-Fi, so the car is a giant Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm-hmm. For me and you, it'd be no different than our phone is a Wi-Fi hotspot. He was pretty impressed with from the car powering up to the Amazon powering up. It, it didn't didn't take it didn't have an issue connecting to the Wi-Fi for us if we just did it with our phones. Um, it would work just fine as well. Um, and then obviously it's going to use your, your cellular data for this. For you, it's no big deal. Obviously, you have unlimited data. Um, I don't know what your tethering's like, but um, I really and this goes back to that concept of I use the the AI assistant that's with me. Um, this would bring her with me everywhere I drove, along with all the music, audiobooks, everything else. Um, I really like this concept because we actually use. That I, and I may actually do it for our vacation this year because we use the timer for things for Christopher a lot. So having that set a timer for two minutes um, would definitely be beneficial on a six hour car ride. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. 
Yeah. And I like it. If you look at it, what this guy did is um, if you scroll down further in that article, it's like it, it fits perfectly in the the cup holder. Yeah, I saw that. But he says, you know, it fits perfectly in the cup holder, but I'm worried I want to put it, forget and put a drink on it. <laughs> yeah. So, and I love, and if you're not on video, he has a BB 8 in the other, other cup holder, one of those Spheros. Uh, so that I appreciate that too. So, and in the video I was showing, you see the little uh, Superman guy just like creeping over on it. <laughs> this is where you put the camera. Um, no, yeah, that, that's the one thing I love. And I don't know what advantage there is to get like the bigger ones, the bigger, more expensive ones at this point. You know, I guess they're better speakers or whatnot, of course. But just like getting these guys and just kind of implementing everywhere. I could see these things like these little push lights that you put in a closet. Mm-hmm. That you can get like that you get like five of them for nineteen ninety nine on the infomercial. Like I feel like mm-hmm. you should get a pack of these, which I think they probably did at one point, didn't they? Like kind of like that those, I, those, did remember, they have a three pack? Remember when they did a six pack of the fire tablet? Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that should be happening with this because this is that thing where here give one to give one to mom, give one to you know put put one in like three of your rooms where it makes sense. Take one to the office, give one to this, this person, you know, and and just create this kind of. Um, voice bubble in your life. I think I, I think they should embed a um, a uh, Wi-Fi repeater in it. So everywhere you put it in your house, it helped bump your your Wi-Fi signal and kind of make it a nest mesh network. Then I'd be buying. There'd be one in every room. Awesome. Um, let's see. What else did I want to touch on here? I, I had a. Let's say there's a couple good videos, and I can't remember if I shared this one. I was trying to. Uh, do you have you have you watched Adam Savage's Tested? It's a I YouTube, have not. It's a YouTube channel. Adam Savage, of course, of MythBusters. Um, but uh, I, I, I just stumbled on it when I was going through YouTube on the Apple TV, and he got to visit MIT's um, basically their Atom <laughs> Lab, and they were talking about they're showing off all the tools they have to look at things, and one of them was like a 3D stereoscopic microscope, and they had an object in there, and apparently, obviously, they couldn't show this kind of video. Same with the Hololens, you couldn't really show the 3D depth. Uh, because you had to transition it to flat 2D, like what we do here, right? Um, but you know, like you could see, like the atoms kind of moving in 3D space as you moved the object in front of it, and it was it was really really cool looking, and a lot of the stuff they have going on there. So I, I recommend Adam Savage is tested if you're into super geeky stuff or want to kind of jump into that. I, I definitely recommend that. Um, Good article there about independent game stores. I, I definitely recommend that we put on there. Polygon talked about, um, you know, what it takes to be an independent video game store, like and how the margins are and how they kind of get screwed over by the video game industry. Um, so that that's a longer conversation, but I definitely recommend that too. Um, Oculus has a two hundred dollar wireless VR headset in the works. They need to. I think they need to to compete with Gear, don't they? Uh, I definitely think so. Because, I mean, as I learned on ScareHouse podcast last week, I didn't know they're working on VR for the Skyrocket at Kennywood. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, they're talking with, um, I just remember his last name is Paradise. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick Paradise down there. And he's just like, oh, yeah, we're in the works. So we're we're kind of working on the VR thing for the Skyrocket, hopefully by the end of the year, mm-hmm. you know. And just like, hold on a second. Like, I think <laughs> I rewound it. I'm like, did you just say, you know, because I'm just hearing Kennywood at the end, you know, the, the good, good discussion about Kennywood. And it's like, oh, by the way, VR. <laughs> Surprise. Well, so what are they? Are, are you going to get your Skyrocket like replay in a VR mode that you can no, take no, with no, you? No, 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 no. You're riding it. You're gonna. Yep. It's like in a race car. You ride. Oh, okay. So it puts you in it. It uses the concept of what you're feeling around you, yep. but then puts you in a different. Okay. What well, he talked about uh, the idea of it syncs with what's happening on the coaster. And there might be a little bit of a game element to it as well. Mm-hmm. So you come back and try to beat your score throughout mm-hmm. the day. And it's also like it's optional too, I believe. Mm-hmm. So you you can just ride the skyrocket, but like various people will have a headset on. I want to see what the headset looks like because I mean, you know, we play with the Gear VR. I wouldn't want to wear that thing. You know, obviously the phone's going to be integrated or something, or you know, be snapped in or, or something like that. I guess there is a cover on the new ones, right? Um, yeah, you can put the cover over, yeah, you can't put the cover over after you put it on there, I think. Mm -hmm. My cover's not on there. I don't know where my cover is. Oh, cover, where art thou? Um, but no, I do. 
the reason I don't put my cover on there is because I occasionally want to be able to look around the room and with the cover on, it covers up the camera. Cause you can actually use like the gear VR. You can switch it into like camera mode in the settings menu. So then I don't have to take off my headset and, and everything else. Oh. VR problems. VR problems. <laughs> yo, well, Welcome to what were they? Yeah, I don't know if you listen to the same podcast where they're talking about they're looking for a new house and they're like, Yeah, we just need a 15 by 15 rooms uh, for our VR units. Uh, so and a playroom for the kids. So, yeah, and there's um, there's an article I'll have to give it to you to put out there that it actually had the prototype video of the Skyrocket. Yeah, it came yeah. out, it was an article in April. And I know they've done this in, in some um. Um, what do you call it? Six Flags? Mm-hmm. I, I think the one. I think the one I drove past in California has it. Um, uh, for that and uh, Magic Mountain, I think it is. So, um, what, what they don't tell you is when you put the VR goggles on, they just blow fans at you and you <laughs> think you're moving. <laughs> just like the just like the 4D movie. So, yes. which which kid you got to check out? Yes, do that. <laughs> do the 4D Lego movie. If you do nothing else at Kennywood, do the 4D Lego movie. It sounds like it's better than the Wonder Woman experience that was I had. So fun. <laughs> It was so much fun. <laughs> I, had, I definitely had to go back and watch Wonder Woman again after that one. But uh, Katie, yes, as has been tradition on this show, we got to finish with the porn-related <laughs> article. By the way, the image that you included with this one I, uh, in the article. There you go. That's as clean. That's the cleanest. That's, that's the cleanest go I'm going to get. That. I can't. I should not click on anything in this. Yeah. Um. So this is. So it's not. No one has actually tried this, but this is what um, <laughs> Cam Soda, which is a porn company, uh, is saying that they're going to offer technology essentially to scan your man part. I don't know. Can I even say? <laughs> can, I, can I say what it's called? I, it's in the image. Okay. So, yeah. Dicometer. Dicometer. So, <laughs> it'll scan your penis because... <laughs> I just saw the animation. Yeah, the animation. You ha- that's that's the best part of the article is is the little the things that like if whether or not if they it scans correctly or not if you make it in um, the one of the guys that runs this is saying that it's it's more personal than a your fingerprint or <laughs> any other login. So essentially, you log into your account by um, submitting a picture of your penis, and if it matches the penis that they have on file that you've sent them, then uh, you can get in there. So you don't even have to log in; it's hands free. <laughs> I can think of Silicon Valley. If anybody's watched it, the hot dog, not hot dog concept <laughs> from it. <laughs> yes. I guess in a way, if you're using this service, I don't think I would want to to provide them with my fingerprint or my retina. Mm-hmm. So I guess this would be a little more acceptable for the service users because you're like, eh, you know, I don't think I want to provide this personal data and, like and convenient data and convenient because you're just kind of in the position to do that anyways right i uh, yeah i guess so yeah uh, <laughs> well that, that someone made the comment in this particular article that was like isn't that the reason you're going because you have to be erect to actually that's that's they said there's more um i guess more telltale things that are personalized to your particular penis in <laughs> when you are erect so you have to be erect going into this to log in so you're already kind of jumping the gun of why you are <laughs> essentially using the service <laughs> I, I i really like how they tra- trademarked prt yes for, for penis recognition technology <laughs> trademark <laughs> So, you, so we can't we can't steal that guys hashtag Dang. trademark yes yes <laughs> wow but it doesn't seem like anyone actually has used this yet but to prove that it's a real thing but hey it's it's interesting <laughs> could be a thing until that gets hacked and just all the photos they're everywhere <laughs> they're everywhere you just use it <laughs> oh no I, I this is terrible this is absolutely terrible so i have this article pulled up and one of the ads is uh, for Hebrew National Hot Dogs. Oh, it just went away. <laughs> it's Hebrew National Hot Dogs right there. There's the ad on my... Wow. Yeah, on this article. Um, the question, <laughs> question coming from producer Missy is, uh, uh, what about the ladies? Uh, that's coming in the future. Coming in the future? Yep, they haven't forgot about the ladies. Which which part are they going for? I don't know, but it's going to be awkward to take that photo. <laughs> Either way, right? Yes. <laughs> they said, those pesky details aren't worth fretting about. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. Well, guys, it was 
interesting this week. Yay! And fun and and all good. Hey, shout out to our friends. Uh, Replay FX is happening um, next week. That is on July. I think it starts the twenty seventh. Is that right? Do do do. Uh, starts uh, July twenty seventh through the thirtieth down at Lawrence David Lawrence Convention Center. I'll be around sometime somewhere. I haven't gotten my schedule yet. Plus, everybody wants me to do other things too. So, um, so uh, head down there. It's 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 video games. It's a giant convention center full of video games, all set to free play, um, console games, all kinds of stuff. Uh, get in there. And our friends uh, looking for group are going to be hanging out there. And the guys at Replay are just really awesome. So please go ch- check it out. Support this great great event that's happening here. It's 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 awesome to see cool stuff coming to the convention center because I remember when it started, it was just like coin shows and stuff. Yes. And now it's like anthrocon uh, oh and the video i have a little bit of a highlight video up from uh the furry parade uh, which features dutters uh, uh hugging a bunch of furries yes, uh, <laughs> up on uh sorgatron media's youtube and facebook page and uh and there you go um i think that's all the big events for this week oh couch party although i'm worried because i started looking at the uh, weather for this weekend mm. so uh starting tomorrow morning i'm moving everything out of the studio into the new one up the street about three four ish blocks away uh so we're gonna have and we're gonna have another open house when we get things a little more settled in and everything to have some a lot of opportunities for you guys uh publicly to to, to be a part of things uh but uh what we're gonna do is on saturday i think at noon i said it for um you can check the uh facebook uh, uh event over on the awesome cast facebook page we are gonna gather and uh walk down here and get that couch over there because that's the only thing i can't take in a car couch in my car up there because we have all the rest of the furniture is up there and everything so we are going to transport the couch up the street right alongside the tea i really hope the tea goes by while we're carrying a big purple couch and into the studio we're going to record our first podcast on the couch in the studio saturday this saturday um it's going to be fun i just want that visual to happen and uh and anybody that wants to come out and be a part of the couch moving party um I, ideally there will just be way more people than is required to move a couch up a hill and uh and it'll be it'll be a lot of fun there uh so uh please come and join us uh check out the facebook page katie she's with the scare house podcast yes i am which just talked to the uh, uh actor zero zero one yeah, <laughs> this week i really enjoyed Tracy. that yeah, really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, she's our she. If you were looked at our marketing last year, she was that demon you saw everywhere. And actually, she's on our um our hiring ad that's going around. Yeah, we're hiring. You want a job? <laughs> we're looking for actors, makeup artists, and uh, customer service agents. No experience necessary. There you Paid. go. Ooh. And it's I mean this is a seasonal you mm-hmm. know through through Halloween kind of thing, kind mm-hmm. of nights and weekends deal. So I, I I encourage anybody to hop out there. Um, it's it's a fun job. It's oh, a, yeah. So go go scare people. Come part of that and subscribe to the Scare House podcast. Uh, John Chichilla is that Chilla on the Twitter? At chillatech.net, and you'll find me at on Saturday from probably the hours of one till who knows one in the evening. Um, you'll probably find me hanging out at Tubin, uh, Glaxian, um, Operation Wolf. I'll definitely be spending some time on that and Spy Hunter. So stop oh, by and say hi. That's next week at Replay FX, right? Yep. Awesome. We should we should do we should do a test run and go to the Coin Op Hall of Fame and visit our friends up there. This is <laughs> definitely a, just as a prep. For a couple hours, so. Um, all right, and that's Sorgatron. Oh, oh, what's that? If you uh, real quick to, to uh, piggyback on your your couch, um, if you need furniture dollies, I have like the ones that are the little squares with four wheels on the bottom that you can put on either side of the Ooh, couch. I can I could probably use a second one of those. Okay, to be yeah, honest. I have one. So, so and I'll be home all day on Friday working on my front which, steps. Which so. also means if we use those, we're just taking that thing straight up the hill on the road, which may be dangerous. I'm not sure. I know we can get a four wheeler. <laughs> <You> get a <laughs> four- <laughs> <laughs> Go knock on that guy's door. Hey, excuse me. I don't know if that belongs to you, but can we borrow it? Yeah, uh, I won't say a word if you let me no, borrow it for nope, like 20 nope, minutes. Not a word. Not a word. So uh, it's exciting. We got a lot of fun stuff coming up. A lot of ideas. 
um, that are, are going to be coming to fruition here finally in the next couple of months. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're going to be a big uh, uh, podcasting beacon up here in Beachview, I hope. So uh, looking forward to all that. Uh, Sorgatron on the Twitter. You can uh, check out that in the Instagram for Sorgatron. Uh, there's going to be a lot of behind the scenes. Sorgatron Media is on Instagram as well. I say a lot of behind the scenes while we're kind of putting this thing together. Um, a lot of my dog in the studio uh, hanging out. Uh, so, uh, you know, until we get going here, um, you can kind of follow the story as, as that develops. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody in the chat room, like Wheels, like Pamela, who thinks John is awesome. Uh, producer Missy uh, out there in California, still keeping us uh, uh, lined up here. And uh, Carmen, my mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon and everybody else. Thank you so much uh, to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.